This is a demonstration of the three completed ALU cards all connected together on the new backplane. Starting from the right, we have the logic card, arithmetic card, and control card. Each card has the various status LEDs down the front, and starting with the logic card, we have the LEDs for each of the five 8 bit results produced. Next, on the arithmetic card, we have the 8 bit add or increment results with carry in and carry out LEDs. Finally, on the control card, we have the 3 to 8 function decoder input and output on the left, and then the condition register status on the right. Over to the right of the card pack, we have the same test board used in my previous videos. The control bus ribbon cable comes in top right, and a portion of the data bus comes in top middle. As usual, the power cable comes in from the right and heads out to the card pack on the left. There's also a pair of crocodile clips which take power and ground over to a breadboard, which we'll see shortly. The top row of red buttons is connected to the four control lines on the data bus. From the right we have F0, F1 and F2 comprising the function code input and this is then followed by the condition register load line. None of the other buttons are active this time around and the control bus ribbon cable was attached to carry out some bug fixing with internal carry out line uh, which wasn't working before shooting this video. It turned out in the end that the reason nothing was coming out uh, was because it wasn't actually wired up on the arithmetic card. On the breadboard is a pair of dip switches which provide the two 8-bit B and C inputs to the card pack. In a change to previous videos I've flipped the bit order so the least significant bit is now on the right rather than on the left and this is to keep things consistent. This also means the right hand dip switch is obscured slightly by some errant wires, uh, something I unfortunately didn't notice until editing this video. On the right hand side of the breadboard we've got the usual LEDs to show the data bus value. And yes, I've still not got enough LEDs to go all green or all yellow. At the back is my Maplin 100 watt bench power supply, set to the usual 12 volts as required. I'll start with switching the power supply on, and currently with all inputs off, the no operation LED is lit, and all 8 bits of the not B logic result are lit. I'll now run through toggling each bit of the B input from 0 through to 7, and then repeat through input C. All of the B and C lines appear to be getting passed through the backplane correctly, which is nice. I'll now place an on-off, on-off pattern on input B, and then toggle through the bits on input C again. Both the logic and arithmetic cards appear to be behaving as expected. I'll now place the on-off pattern back on input B and place an on-on-off-off pattern on input C.
With this pattern active, we can see the logic and arithmetic results are as expected. I'll now run through gating the 7ALU functions onto the data bus using the 3-bit function code input. That also looks to be working as expected, so just the condition registers to test next. I'll first load the condition register with nothing on the data bus. As expected, the zero condition is set and held. I'll now set a single bit on input C and load the register again. No change. Actually, this is as expected, because although the logic and arithmetic cards are showing a result, there's nothing being gated onto the data bus, which is where the zero detect is driven from. If I gate and hold the result and then load the register, the zero condition should be cleared. Next, I'll test the sign condition by setting the most significant bit on input C and then loading the register again. Again, the condition only sets when the result is gated onto the data bus. As expected, when the sign condition is set, the zero condition is unset, as they are by definition mutually exclusive. Finally, I'll test the carry condition by setting the most significant bit on input B alongside input C, thereby causing a carry on the arithmetic card. This time, there's a bit of an oddity. The carry bit is set regardless of whether there's anything gated on the result bus or not. This is because the internal carry control line is passed directly into the control card. I'm not totally happy with this inconsistency, as the condition could get set when we're actually dealing with a logic result. This wouldn't normally be a problem when we come to program the computer, as it wouldn't make much sense branching on a carry flag following a logic operation anyway. However, I might as well keep things tidy, so I'll pop in an extra gating relay on the arithmetic card so the carry out line is only active when the add or increment result is being gated. That's pretty much it functionality wise. Just with a bit of variation though, I'll set a slightly more interesting pattern on input B and C. So, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 on input B, and 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 on input C, which at least makes a nice pretty pattern on the logic card. As before, I'll run through the ALU functions in order, gating each result out to the data bus.
One final curiosity before I wrap up. During the operations I've been performing on the LU in this video, you may have noticed the ampage raising and falling on the power supply. That's the bottom of the two numbers, the one that isn't 12 volts. I'm quite curious to see how much power the ALU can burn, so I'm now going to set all bits on input B and C and see what the cost is. So, that's coming out at 1.06 amps, which is pretty hungry, but not actually all that surprising considering how many relays are switched on in this state. That said, I think I can probably squeeze a bit more out by getting the result out and loading the condition register at the same time. Here goes. One point three seven amps. That's more like it. Hopefully in normal use it shouldn't get anywhere near that, but I'll have to keep this maximum in mind as this power supply will only go up to around 5 amps or 100 watts, whichever comes first. Right, I'd better turn all those relays back off again. So, that's it for the ALU as a whole. Next up will be the B and C register so that we can load the ALU from the data bus. And then following that, the A, D register so we can store the result and pass values around the four registers. These four registers will come in on two cards which will take up the remaining slots in the backplane. Please visit my blog at relaycomputer.blogspot.co.uk to see more information on this ALU and the ongoing construction of my relay computer.